Okay, folks, and I am back in Florida after my one-day trip to New York for a couple of things and a couple of appearances. Maybe you caught me on the TD Ameritrade Network or Fox Business with Charles Payne and an upcoming Barstool Sports uh, podcast <laughs> interview. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait till that one comes up probably next week, but you'll be sure to get it. So good morning. My name is Kenny Polkari, and today is August 5th, 2022. And here are the things that you need to know. The Bank of England hikes rates by 50 basis points and warns of tougher times ahead across the UK, across Europe, and in the United States. Fed's Mester, Loretta Mester, suggests we, we need to be at four plus percent by year end and then more next year. Oil continues to retreat, and that's good. Can it hold the trend line? Gold prices pierce resistance. They back off as they ready to challenge the hides again. And what do we have for dinner tonight? We're going to try the Perchatelli. We'll get to that in a moment. So stocks were mixed yesterday, right? Challenging job cuts up 36.3%. Continuing claims were up by 31,000, coming in at 1.41 uh, million. Uh, and of the 100 earnings reports that we got, 70% of them uh, beat the estimates, right? Keeping us in line with the recent trend. Treasury yields fell, prices rose as investors price in rising inflation, rising interest rates, and a slowing economy. Yet the yield curve remains inverted across the spectrum. The Bank of England, like I said, hiking interest rates by 50 basis points while they predicted that UK inflation will continue to rise, only peaking after it hits 15% by the new year. In addition, the Bank of England also predicts that the recession that's coming could rival the economic difficulties seen during the great financial crisis, hinting at the possibility that the Fed is not being completely transparent. Speaking of the Fed, we have Cleveland's Loretta Mester, and she's apparently feeling a bit mixed about the messages coming from the Fed, now telling us that the Fed should raise interest rates to above 4% by year-end to help bring inflation down and must keep tightening through at least June of 2023 before pivoting. And pivoting does not mean uh, a cut. It may just mean a slowdown. She qualified it by saying she would pencil in going a bit above four as appropriate. She was also very clear saying that she will need to see several months of decline, significant declines before the Fed should ease up. When asked about what we can expect in September, though, she said she's keeping her mind open. JJ has kept 75 basis points on the table, although Fed fund futures are only pricing in a 50 basis point increase in September. Remember, current rates are two and a quarter to two and a half percent. So to get us to four plus percent by year end means that we need another 1.75 percent increase over three meetings. So you do the math and figure it out. Oil retreats falling 3.2% to end the day at 87.80. It is the ongoing talk of the economic slowdown that continues to drive the move lower, slightly piercing its long-term support at 88.80. A level I pointed out that would be key uh, to the next long-term move, right? If oil can't take back this trend line, then the expectation is that it's going to test lower still. Think 80.85 range. This morning, oil is up just enough to hold the line, but it's not up with any conviction. And talk of a bigger slowdown will surely send oil lower, or at least that's what they hope it'll do. As the closing bell rang, the Dow gave up 96 points. Yes, uh, 86 points the Dow. The S&P lost four points. The S&P gave back 53. The Russell lost three. The transports rallied by 52. The recent rally is being fed by the idea that inflation may have peaked here in the States, and that's going to force the Fed to back off. Today's economic data will shed additional light on this argument, right? We're preparing for the monthly non-farm payroll report, and it is expected to show that we restored 250,000 jobs lost during the pandemic. Unemployment is expected to remain low at 3.6%. The labor force participation rate remains at 62.2%, and average hourly earnings up three-tenths of a percent month over month and up 4.9% year over year. Right? A reading that is stronger than the expectation could provoke a negative response by traders and algos as it would be seen as a reason for the Fed to remain hawkish. A weaker number would be seen as a positive, suggesting that the recent Fed moves are working successfully so the Fed may be able to pivot and become a little bit more dovish. 
Speculation was rampant yesterday all day around what Arizona Senator Kristen Sinema would do or not do concerning the massive spending program that the Democrats are trying to shove down our throats and push to a vote by tomorrow. Word is this morning that Sinema caved and is buying into the bill. So you got to ask, what did she get in return for her support? According to the Wall Street Journal, Manchin got a suite of common sense permitting reforms that will ensure all, uh, all our energy infrastructure from transmission of pipelines and export facilities can be and will be efficiently and responsibly built. And this is going to cost us $433 billion in spending and $327 billion in new taxes. The article goes on to say that while that's what they're telling us, nobody inside the negotiating room seems to know what specific, or outside the negotiating rooms, seems to know what specific terms are in play. And Manchin's office is not rushing to give us any answers. The word is that cinema saved the carried interest tax loophole, something that she has fought really hard for while supporting a new tax on corporate buybacks. So expect lots of analysis today and over the weekend and next week. Tomorrow's 12 p.m. vote is going to be keenly watched. And in another kick in the pants, the Democrats are also hiring a bunch of new IRS agents. They're getting an $80 billion in funding to go after Americans that are accused of not paying enough to the government. On the geopolitical front, China is turning up the temperature over the skies of Taiwan after Nancy's visit. Launching missiles that are flying all over the place. Fighter jets and bombers crossing the median line while 10 warships remain in the waters off Taiwan. Japan ringing the bell as five of those missiles landed in their economic zone. And all of this is expected to continue through Sunday when the... When the, when the uh, um, Military exercises end. Margaret Bennett, Brennan on Face the Nation is sure to dissect and analyze all of this on Sunday morning. Gold traded up and through the trend line resistance at 1811 yesterday before settling in at 1806. This morning it's down six dollars at 1800 as it digests the recent surge higher. Gold is up 6.8% since mid July. Talk of a recession in the global geopolitical situation helping cause that move. Remember, gold is considered the inflation hedge and a store of value when political tensions heat up. 1811 is a level to watch, right? It's resistance, but it's a level to watch. If inflation remains elevated and geopolitical tensions remain hot, then expect gold to push higher. Dow futures are churning in place, right? This morning, the Dow futures up 25, the S&P's down three, the Nasdaq down 20, the Russell's flat. So no real move as we wait. European markets are also lower. Not big, but they are lower. Markets across the region there are down between one-tenth of a percent and half a percent. Investors there are awaiting our NFP report today, and then they're going to look for more clues as to what the Fed will do next. The S&P closed at 41.51 up more than 15% since the June low of 3,600. Excitement building that maybe that was the low. I think it is. Doesn't mean we're not going to test it again. All I'd say is just be careful. While the rally feels good, I think there's more chop ahead. Right? There's not an FOMC meeting this month, but the Jackson Old Boondoggle takes place at the end of the month. And then we hit the September-October time frame, which is typically a tougher time for the markets. While I remain bullish on the broader market going into year end, I remain cautious over the next couple of months. And all that means is opportunities ahead. A strong NFP report this morning could see us test the recent rally, as it would support a larger Fed move in September. Next week will be an important macro week as well. The 10th brings us the latest CPI report, and the 11th brings us the latest PPI report. Both are key inflation measures, and they are sure uh, to be the focus for investors next week, right? As we try to determine where we're going. Anyway, what do we have for dinner tonight? This is such a simple dish and it's summertime, so it's so great. It's got lemon in it. It feels, it tastes delicious and it presents beautifully. So it's perchatelli with a lemon butter sesame seed sauce. And I say perchatelli, it's a long, it's like, it's like spaghetti, it's thicker though, right? Um, this only takes 10 minutes to make. Really, as long as it takes to boil the pasta, you can have this dish on the table. So you want to bring a pot of salt and water to a rolling boil. 
When it comes up, you want to add the pasta. Now, you could use porcatello, you could use bucatini, you could use spaghetti. Uh, don't use anything thinner than that, though. You need something like that. Now, in a large saute pan, you want to melt two sticks of butter for a pound of pasta and on medium-low heat. You don't want it to burn. Once it's melted, you want to add in the fresh squeezed lemon juice, stirring as you add. Now, look, taste as you go because you don't want to overpower it, right? You want there to be the hint of lemon, but not too much. If you put too much in, you can't take it out. You can always add more. In a separate pan, you want to take the sesame seeds and just toast them on the, on the stove. Don't burn them. Just toast them, toss them, now set them aside. Once the pasta is done, 8 to 10 minutes, you want to strain it. Always take it a mug full of water. Add the pasta directly to the butter lemon sauce. Toss it and coat it. Now add in two handfuls of pecorino romano cheese and the toasted sesame seeds. Toss it all so it all mixes nicely. If you need to add a little bit of the pasta water, Add it now, toss it, and then serve immediately, right? It's a simple summer dish. It's a great summer dish. It's easy to prepare. It's easy to eat. And it will become a summer favorite. Look, it is Friday morning. The day's about to get started. It's going to be a beautiful day here. It's going to be a beautiful weekend in South Florida. Let's see what the NFP report has to tell us today. Until Monday, take good care.